clouds are something you probably don't take that much notice of. Unless they're about to rain on you or you're trying to figure out their shape. That one is definitely a penguin eating an ice cream. Can't you see it? Anyway, there's actually a lot more going on up there than you might have imagined. Clouds form when warm, moist air rises and then cools down. The water in the air condenses to form tiny water droplets or ice crystals, which settle on dust particles, creating the fluffy looking masses. They're a really important part of the Earth's atmosphere, helping to regulate our planet's temperature and bringing rain and snow. And by studying them, meteorologists can learn more about the weather and climates. That's why the World Meteorological Organization first published something called a cloud atlas all the way back in 1896. It's become a big catalogue of cloud formations and species. Yep, clouds are given species names just like animals. The atlas includes things like the puffy cumulus, the high-flying wisps of cirrus, and the cumulonimbus, which brings rain and lightning. Those are the common ones, right? But have you ever seen a wall cloud? What about a full streak hole cloud? Or a UFO cloud? And for the first time in 30 years, the Cloud Atlas has been updated to include new cloud formations. And it's been put online, so anyone can cloud search. I wonder how long it's going to take for me to see one of these. The Atlas now includes a brand new species called the Volutus, or Roll Cloud, that many Australians know as the amazing morning glory cloud spotted way up north. There are also five new special clouds defined by the unusual ways they form, like Flamogenitus, which is created by forest fires or volcanic eruptions, and Homogenitus, made by human activity. Finally, there are five new cloud features, like the rare wave-like Kelvin Helmholtz clouds, and the Asperitus, which looks more like a rough sea seen from below the surface. The Cloud Appreciation Society, yes, that's a real thing, has been pushing to get Asperitus into the Atlas for the past eight years. Now it's in with an Aussie connection. The identifying photo of Asperitus was taken by cloud-loving Tasmanian granddad, Gary. So to have my own photograph in that is quite special, um, quite chuffed. Gary says he's been smitten with clouds ever since he was in primary school and spends a lot of time staring at the sky, which is how he got his winning snap. Sometimes the best clouds are just there for an instant, so you have to be there just at the right time to capture them. So take a lesson from Gary and take a look up sometimes, because you never know what you might see.